Hey yo, I'm Dennis and in this video I would like to walk you through the exact process which helped us land a B2B sale for a B2B SaaS startup called Mile3 Card in just six days. First of all, let me give you some context. So Mile3 Card had a problem with getting new customers into their pipeline and they were booking just one call a week. We changed their go-to-market strategy and are now getting 20 to 25 product demos every single month. Here's what we've done differently. So basically Mile3 all allows creators to process payments easily. Easily. And unlike other tools, it's the easiest one to use. And this is the exact point which we wanted to highlight in our campaigns. Here's the screenshot of their website and testimonial from Jillian, the founder. First, we analyzed their ideal customer profile. Instead of selling to creators and coaches who are just starting out to sell online, we went for people already running memberships with 20 plus members. This allowed us to charge more and opened an opportunity for upsells. One of the huge mistakes I see nearly half of the all SaaS founders make is that they are selling to beginners. Look, depending on the size of the problem you are solving, you're going to be rewarded accordingly. If you are solving a very small problem, that's when you have to fight for charging 5 to $15 subscriptions. However, if you change your market positioning and you go into solving a bigger problem, which is worth more, then accordingly, people are able to reward you more for solving this. The more time you save to them and the higher the ROI you're giving, the larger is the pricing that you're able to charge. And you can actually go from charging 10 to 50 bucks to being able to convert people into a couple thousand dollars a month subscriptions just by you tweaking the explanation of the problem you are solving. And that's exactly what we did combined with the fact that instead of us targeting those people who are just starting out in their creator journey and are facing the pain point of being unclear, okay, how do I sell online? How do I start this uh, creator business? How do I create a blog? We wanted to transition our ICP towards those who would already be looking to grow their business from, for instance, 10K to 50K a month, their creator business. And they immediately could understand our value much better and they were way easier to convert. Just because as the pain point of them saving time and having to go through all this headache with the managing payments was so much more of a pain, that's why it was way more relevant. Second, we launched a Facebook group funnel. As 19% of our target audience is on Facebook, we wanted to be where they are. Again, you really want to be doing this with your startup up instead of you thinking, oh, I like hanging out on Instagram. Why don't I post Instagram stories? You want to be where your ideal customers are. You want to appear in those places where they're actively looking and searching for you. Yes, high chance that they're looking for you on Google. But apart from them looking for you on Google, which is not always true, actually, what are other channels where they would go to ask about your solution, where they would search for you? You must be there. For instance, if we're talking about people who are life coaches and who are all on Facebook and they're participating in Facebook groups and communities, predominantly they're on Facebook and Instagram and not on Reddit. And vice versa, if you're selling a solution for engineers, high chance they are on Reddit and not on Instagram. Cool. We went through groups related to memberships and growing creator businesses and ran a campaign for them, inviting them to our group. Our group warmed up the leads in our funnel. And there, every day, we posted tips on growing successful memberships, how Mile3 makes everything way easier because our tool is exactly helping them manage their payments for their membership easier. Third, we ran a cold email campaign. Partly, we were targeting those people who were already been warming up for some time. And partly, these were the leads who we scraped from groups related to people in our niche. So for instance, we went to groups where coaches hang out, where people managing memberships hang out. We found a way to scrape them. And that's how we built a lead list of three to 5,000 people and started targeting them. We knew exactly who we were targeting and what pains they are struggling for. From. This allowed us to get the first positive replies on Monday, day one, book the first calls for Wednesday and receive money from the first sale on Saturday. Initially, we started with six domains, but after closing a few deals within a few weeks, we have increased the volume to 15 domains and each of them is now reaching 50 prospects a day. What gets us 750 people a day and 22.5k prospects a month. Depending on the ticket size you're selling to, you can accordingly adjust number of domains that you're using for cold email campaigns. Usually the higher deal size you're selling to, the fewer domains you would need. But I would not advise you to go below 10. On the other hand, if you're selling a solution which is between five and hundred dollars a month, you want to massively go up in number of domains that you're using just because it will be harder for you to target the ideal audience. And for that reason, you need to compensate it with sending out larger volume. We knew exactly who we're targeting and that's why we're doing six domains and then gradually 
ex um, were extending it once we saw that the channel is working for us. By the way, if you're a B2B SaaS founder, we'll teach you how to get 20 extra qualified demos a month in six months or less and refund you in full in case it doesn't work at SaaS Camp Accelerator, which I run. So make sure to check it out. Number four, we optimized our funnel. Initially, we created four campaign variations with four angles of our value proposition. After 1000 emails, we saw which value prop converts best and then tested four email formats. Usually when I set up campaigns for B2B SaaS, we want to be testing four different angles. Number one is authority hook. Number two is the question hook. Number three is pain point. And number four is case study where we leverage some of the previous success stories that we gained and we use them in our copy. Variation B gave us the highest positive reply rate of four to seven percent. And that's why we doubled down on it afterwards. There we asked the qualifying question in email one and came back with a case study plus call invite after they replied. And this combination has worked best for us. And that's why now for all 15 domains, we are sending it out to a few hundred people every single day and booking couple calls every day. Number five, we found opportunities for upsells. As you remember, one of the key changes we made was changing our ideal customer profile. Please be mindful about who you're running campaigns to and who you are selling your solution to. If you're selling to a beginner market, please don't be surprised that it's very hard for you to get them convert into a few hundred dollar solution. On the other hand, if you know how much value and how much ROI you are delivering, that's exactly how you can go up to charging 40 to 100K a month. As we targeted a healthier audience, we added upsells to their funnel, which let us double the LTV. This got mileage free from four to 25 demos a month at 35% close rate. Look, one of the key elements which distinguishes success of your business is the health of audience that you are selling to. Please spend some time to figure out, are you actually selling to those people who would be getting most value from your tool? If not, make sure that you tweak positioning, go to another market who do have the money to afford your software. Hopefully you loved it. Let me know if you got any questions or need help executing this for your startup and I'll see you in the next video.